Welcome to our next video, where we address the transformation of consciousness as it is presented in the system of the fourth way and explained by Maurice Nicole in his famous work, Psychological Commentaries on the Teaching of Gurdjieff and Uspensky. In the previous video, we have learned that the transformation of consciousness can be compared to the way material substances change and transform through different chemical processes, like how the instinctive center in the human body digests ordinary food. This sounds very easy, but we all know that transforming an impression can be hard. So, what prevents impressions from transforming themselves in us? Why does this digesting of impression not always automatically happen? Let's ask Nicole. Like we discussed before, the first conscious shock is to make impressions pass on in their evolution. Now, two things must be considered and clearly understood. First, the first conscious shock does not happen to man asleep. It is a conscious effort requiring special knowledge and self-observation and given in connection with the incoming impressions of life and a person's mechanical reactions to them. Roughly, it consists in seeing the object and seeing one's reactions to it simultaneously and without being identified. Furthermore, the first conscious shock to the human machine increases the energies of the machine. The result is actually to give every cell in the body different food. If the first conscious shock is applied, the third state of consciousness is touched, with the result that the human machine works in a different way, owing to new energies both as regards its psychical and its physical functions. That's very helpful, Nicole, but can you elaborate some more on the idea of different states of consciousness? Sure, no problem. Mechanical man ordinarily only lives in two states of consciousness, sleep and waking sleep. The third state of consciousness is the state of self-remembering, which man should possess but which he has gradually lost because of the wrong conditions of his life. Today it can be said only to occur in the form of very rare flashes, it is the creation of this third state of consciousness that forms the first conscious shock. That is, the first object of the work is to recover this lost state, namely, to make a man remember himself until eventually he does not merely have rare flashes of increased consciousness, over which he has no control, but can create in himself increasing degrees of self-remembering by deliberate efforts. Very clear. So what results can one expect from self-remembering? In other words, why should man even bother to put in the effort of giving himself the first conscious shock? Well, that's quite obvious, Bella. These efforts, which belong to the first conscious shock, gradually cause the machine to work more rightly. Many wrong functions, both in the psychic and physical spheres, acquired by the wrong working of the machine in the two lowest states of consciousness, that is, in darkness, then begin to disappear of themselves. On the face of it, it appears as though man is losing energy by invoking the first conscious shock, but in reality, one is restoring natural life energy, do you understand? Yes, I sure do. But let's now return to the question as to what prevents this first conscious shock from happening. Why does not this always happen? Well, it does happen in childhood. Something fundamental is created in the body in early youth to a certain extent. We may remember its action, but as personality grows more and more thickly round essence, it happens less and less. That is, impressions are more and more intercepted by personality. Impressions coming in through the senses fall, as it were, on a thick net that catches everything, and but a very small part passes onwards and produces a very small amount this fundamental awareness. It seems to me that personality is keeping essence hostage, stuck like a fish in a net. Is that a fair way to imagine this situation? Yeah, that's a very accurate analogy, Bella. This net, which you are referring to, is false personality, with its strong buffers, its fixed attitudes, its mechanical associations, its roles automatically set in motion, and its ideas that it knows and can do, with all its contradictory eyes, with all the different forms of negative emotion, which it has acquired by imitation, with all its habits of identifying, considering, self-justifying, imagining and lying, centered in the false personality. All these prevent impressions from passing on in their normal transformations, in other words, something opaque, as it were, has formed itself at the place where impressions enter and close up the way for their passage onwards. It basically keeps man from reaching his true potential and living an energetic life. That sounds kind of tragic, don't you think? So what can man do that will support him in making effort? What is that fundamental substance you were talking about that we all have formed in us in childhood? The ideas of the work, very simple. 
The work stands for ideas that belong to the conscious circle of humanity that has been around since the beginning of time, but that we have forgotten. So, how can a man bring the work up to the place of incoming impressions? In brief, by remembering the work emotionally. The more a man through right self-observation feels his own helplessness, the more he realizes his ignorance, the more he sees his mechanicalness, and that he is a machine, the more he perceives his own utter nothingness, the more emotional will the work becomes to him. Only in this emotional understanding, the ideas of the work can become so valuable, so important to us, that it begins to have the intensity of meaning and significance that it deserves. False personality will begin to collapse, and a man will become as a little child. If a man's love no longer runs always into himself, into his habitual ideas of himself, his strange vanity and esteem of himself, that is, into false personality, then the direction of his will alters, that is, the resultant of his desires alters. When the valuation of the truth of esoteric teaching becomes stronger than self-evaluation, it begins to act on a man. He begins to take everything differently. The whole way in which he reacts to outer life changes. He begins to see life through the work, and instead of wasting his time in hundreds of forms of useless internal considering or negative reactions, or of identifying, he seeks for the power of the work to help him to change these mechanical reactions, which he is now aware of by observation, and to transform his habitual ways of taking things. He begins to live more consciously at this point where life is entering as impressions. That's a very promising outlook on the results one can get from making effort. Thanks, Nicole. Your words are very elusive and will certainly inspire our listeners to keep making effort and speaking of effort. If you found some helpful insights in this video, please consider making the effort of subscribing to our channel, or maybe even liking this video. Our videos are aimed at helping man to instantiate that first conscious shock. Thanks.